You can beat. Oh, sorry. You can beat. Can anything else go wrong? All right. Oh, you should not have asked that question, Pastor Chuck. No, your fault, Steve. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, Ghostman has to come leave and come back every time we play a video. That's weird. Yeah, it really is. No, no, no. Should my video should be showing up as live as well? Correct. Yeah, it did. I got the. I got the notification. Okay, so I'm going to click on that so I can watch the chat room. That's why I asked. Okay. Oh, that's smart. I need to do something like that. Okay. Yeah, you really... I, I can't believe you guys can't see the chat. I can see it, but I usually am on my laptop. But, you know, down here in the condo, I've had terrible Wi-Fi situations. So, for whatever reason, my phone's been a little bit more reliable. But when I get back home, I'll try to get set up where I had the laptop again. Oh, boy, yeah. Well, yeah, I got I got the laptop off to the side here so I can watch. Whatever. Oh, yeah. well. Yep. What do you like Good to stuff. watch, Father Charles? Hey, how do you get how do you get notifications? Because I I get them from Ghost Man, but yeah. I don't. It's... Are you subscribed to my channel? Yeah. You got to uh, ring that bell. So, and then you got to click on subscribe, then notify. Yeah, you got to ring that bell. Excuse me. Then when I go live, you'll get a notification are, that I'm going live. Well, are, uh. you, are you wanting a notification or are you wanting the invite as soon as we open up the room? Right. So he'd want an invite. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that's why you're not getting a notification because you're getting an invite. I, I actually think everyone should... Uh, give us their their stuff on messenger if they use messenger and we can just send a mass invite to everybody all at once yeah are you on are you on messenger steven i am i'm on facebook i'll see are you is it is it proverbs guy no it's uh my full name steven andrew boland okay well somebody somebody was getting messages from me named proverbs guy <laughs> uh, are they angry Sorry, funny, but messages? no they never responded back I, I am so they're probably sorry. like what the heck is this guy talking about <laughs> oh man uh, let me see I'm trying to figure out I might have to do it the old fashioned way what happened to Brother Chuck? Um, he got ramped. device not connected? Oh, there Price he is. Not working. Hi, Brother oh, Charles. You're back. you're back, brother. There's somebody in the comment section named, named The Vulture. I would like to talk to a guy named The Vulture. He should come on. Yeah. Uh, on on um, YouTube, I have the I have the invite to this room pinned in the chat at the very top. So anybody's welcome to come in as long as they're respectful. Yeah. If Christian has ten more. He can outdo Pastor Anderson. If I have ten more kids, he's gonna do what yeah. now? Because Pastor Anderson, the three kids I got. That's 11 kids. <laughs> kids are Last I checked. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine having 11 kids? I, I wanted to have six. Do you have 11 kids? I'm, one of, I'm, I'm one of seven. I have, I have three kids. Ghost men. Oh. 
And they're all grown. One of them's probably older than you. You're 35, right? Why don't you come on in? Yeah. Yeah, I got a daughter that's older than you. Hey, wow. everybody, welcome Ryan. Ryan's with us. Hey, everybody. Hi, Ryan. Happy hey, Memorial Day. Hey, Ryan. All of you. Happy Memorial Day. Now, oh, yeah, happy Memorial Day. Everyone in the private chat, I put my link to uh, Facebook so you guys can oh. send me a message. I already have you, Christian, and you, Ghost Man. And me. You guys send me a message. Yeah, I have you too, Ryan. Um, Danny. And then I'm going to add all of us from the panel to a a Facebook group so that we can all get the invite at the same time. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, cool. okay. That sounds good. Cool, cool. Yeah, and if anybody uh, has friends that they think would be interested in the group or can add good conversation, um, feel free to get an invite to them. I, I am trying to get hey, a man in here. Wait a minute. I'm going to fire one off to my daughter. My daughter said she might be interested in joining, so I'll fire one off to her. Hey, I, almost nuked, I almost nuked the entire chat with my volume there. I had it set to speaker. Sorry about that. I averted it, though. You? The apocalypse was averted. Hey, Aiden, oh. were you seriously injured? You were saying? Yeah, yeah, I was. And I, I heard you were making yeah, light of that. Uh, oh, last I wasn't time making light of it. Of I think that it saved you from a debate. Ah, yes, of course. So you did make light of it, is what you're trying to say. No, we didn't even have a debate scheduled. Hey, Aiden. That's, that's not what I'm saying. You made light of my injuries, what I'm trying to say. Aiden, I haven't made light of anything in a long time. <laughs> hey, Aiden. I can, I can lay this out in real simple English if you want. We can try it again. Is it yeah. Her Majesty's English or is it George Washington's oh, English? Oh, goodness, goodness. Sorry, goodness. someone else is petitioning me for attention. Yes, who, who speaketh? It's me. Um, <laughs> Bubs so you guys something to, you might find amusing? Bubs wanted me to tell you, hey, Evan. <laughs> hey, Evan? Yeah. Wow. Um, you you caught me, Bubblegum Gun. I am Evan. You're right. I, who's sad. this Evan? Does he it's, have beef it, with this it's, Evan? It's a child. Ah, I it's see. a child who said that. <laughs> Just so you have context. Oh, I thought it was Bubblegum Gun. I thought that's who you were talking no, about. No, I've heard my him call Bubs as well. My gotcha. son Leo heard him call your name, and he goes, hey, Evan. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Guys, Sorry, I've heard him called Bubs before, so I just misunderstood. Want to see something interesting? Wait, <gasps> time, stump. and then tell us the interesting something, something, Ryan. Stump is in the room, so everybody just give him your full respect and attention. Uh, hey, Stump. stump. No, you don't have to get stump, up. Stump. Hello, brothers. If someone hey. shoots at him, you jump in front of that bullet, guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm, he, I'm he at the position of attention saluting him right now. He has I'd, precious cargo. I will say, I would have a beer with Stump. Stump, what kind of beer do you like, buddy? Uh, MGD. Like, I'm, a, I'm a Stella guy myself. Stella Artois, Heineken. But you know what? I'll still have a beer with you. Because you're, you're a decent guy. As long as you're buying, it's good. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, it's probably cheaper in the States than up here in Canada, so I'll, I'll pay it. Amen. Pay it. You guys ready? Are we yes, ready? I'm sorry. Go ahead, okay. Ryan. Back in January, I was visiting the Buckinghams, and Jeremiah gave me something that apparently is very rare now. He gave me this. Can you see it? Barely. What is it? It's a dino, $5 dino bill from back at the old dinosaur Adventureland in Pensacola. Oh, goodness. Still, that's, he, that's a holy relic you've got. I know. Hands right there. It is. It is, and he gave it to me. And I said, "Wow, where did you get that?" You know, he said, "There's not, but a few left. I mean, there's there's not many left." Does it it's say that. in Kent we trust on it though? <laughs> <laughs> no, it because come on, Kent that. is in fact the god of the pantheon that is dinosaur <laughs> adventure. Man. Yes, fake yeah. news. Fake <laughs> news. Oh, come on, Dr. it's okay. Dinosaur. You can admit it. You're in. You're amongst friends. You can work, you admit that you worship Kent Oven, Stephen. I right. can uh, admit uh, that yeah, this I, news be fake. Sorry, no okay. Kent. Okay. No, um, I I would never worship a human being. That's uh, the only difference between your rhetoric and Trump's. There is, is that you got an extra syllable, you got an extra syllable in your last name there, Mister uh, Bowen. One of God's soldiers like I am, but he just happens to be doing more than I do. I don't know Mr. if I'll be able to do as much as he does. Well, now we'll never be able to do as much as God does. That's the whole point. If we could, <laughs> we'd be serving a small God. 
That's yeah, right. who who's supposed to kill all those firstborn Egyptian children? I mean, come on. No, I was oh, talking about no. I'll never be able to do as much as. Well, Kit. somebody has to be there to do it. Is all I'm trying to say. I mean, sure, they could have killed Pharaoh and just resolved minute, the issue right minute. then and there. But we're no. talking to your antagonist personality. Can you send out good conversating, debating Aiden? Can we speak to him? He's um, interesting and fun. I'm sorry, but you gotta kick me right now if that's what you're looking for, because I'm not I'm not in that mood right now, Steven. I'm injured, and I'm upset with you because you made... I guess I can't say you made light of that, because you won't understand. You joked at my expense about my injury. There we you go. Realize we had, you realize we had, and by we, I mean I specifically, had mm -hmm. no context as to how serious your injuries were. Ah, so you just assumed that it was fine, that I just yes. had a little I had a little boo-boo. Well, see. yeah, with Canadian healthcare, I assumed you guys went to the hospital for anything. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like how... Canada, my Our home and native land. land. I'm going to throw up. You know, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> gonna throw up. <laughs> do I it, do it, Danny friends in alberta and one of them actually you know said that they have a really good system and he said you know one time his dad had to go to the hospital and he said at least you don't live in america and you'd have to pay for it i mean it's true <laughs> i mean i literally had an mri done earlier today so uh, i gotta say that compared um, to america yeah i'd be out of pocket a lot of money for that where, where in but, canada are you know, aiden uh, aiden, aiden, aiden um aiden oh, sorry Oh, I'm, I'm, Chuck, if you go to your email, I sent you an invite to be the co-host, so you just have to go accept it. You've had it for wow, a while. Wow, maybe that's how. None of my, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We hear uh, you. Uh, none of my devices are working. And so Aiden's here. Go to Facebook? No. Where in Canada uh, are you, Aiden? We hear you. I'm broadcasting from an undisclosed location, well, the can't. Money Pit from Oak Island. I, I don't know if you ever seen the show Curse of Oak Island. But I, I I'm actually broadcasting from the Money Pit right now. All right, really? I'm, gonna click, I'm gonna click on wow. your screen. Isn't that yeah. in Brunswick or somewhere? Uh, yeah. Well, you don't know that, okay? I'm not allowed to disclose that information. <laughs> okay. Anybody can look it up and find out. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't need you disclosing that information either, sir. You're, you're ruining this. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Ryan, you're a United States postal Just worker. Want, yeah. You're a federal employee. If I you am. seek That's out bad. information from a Canadian citizen, it's espionage. Oh, yeah, Stephen, okay. Stephen oh. almost doxed me. He almost dropped my last <laughs> name earlier. He said half oh. my last name. He was like, Mister. He doesn't, but my last name isn't here, so he would have doxxed me if he would have shown my <laughs> last name there. So I, I have, I would have had no choice at that point but to duel Stephen at dawn. You know what? Until just now, I forgot your last name. <laughs> um, yeah, you shouldn't say anything, Aiden. <laughs> right? Are you there, Pastor Chuck? Uh, you, uh, he is, and he isn't. He's double there. I he is. My, I can't get my my camera apart. Well, you don't really need your camera. Christian does it because he's moderately attractive. Yes, the rest of us hide our faces because he's not wrong. We're no, no Chuck, possession. He sounded like a super battle droid from Star Wars there for a second. That was pretty yeah, that was cool. cool. I wanted him to say Roger, Roger. I, I wanted him to do a camera. Roger, Roger feels real more quick. Personal. Stomp, I'm glad you're back. I can't because the gleam from Noah's Ark that's right behind. I, I did say that I'm in the money pit right now. The gleam from Noah's Ark is so bright that I wouldn't actually be able to broadcast. It would just be pure light. Aiden, do you want to have a debate with me on Noah's Ark? On the validity of Noah's Ark? I mean, I'd absolutely be willing to have a debate with you if we could establish that you were debating in good faith. What do you mean? I, I mean the fact that I don't understand where you stand on me because on one aspect... You try to butter me up and you try to say, oh, Aiden's good at this and he's good at that. You're a good debater, Aiden. Why are you always right about Brett Keen, Aiden? And then on the other hand, you get upset with me whenever I bring up anything that's a little bit uncomfortable towards you. And you block me and you block all modes of communication with me. And only you when announce you come your willingness. Off only on. aggressive and vulgar and inappropriate. Hey, I've never sworn in your shows. And you make it personal. I've never sworn in your shows. If you have I, an issue with doctrine challenge me 
If you have an uh, uh, an issue with my thought, challenge me. Well, I can't Leave exactly talk to you. Out of it. I can't talk to you about personal stuff in private, though, Stephen, because you blocked you me and you blocked all modes of communication. If you yourself like a gentleman, you would not be blocked, Aiden. I am a very reasonable and forgiving man. Was it if gentlemanly you when you passed around like a video a by Joanna saying that Cindy had poison dialogue. cookies? Was it was a gentlemanly of you to put, pass around a video saying that jo from Joanna saying that Cindy gave a bunch of poison cookies to Candy? Hey, we sound like a we sound like a bunch of fourteen year old girls. Can we get on topic? Oh, okay, we got the henchman coming in here trying to wipe things back in. I'm sorry, brother. I'll, I'll... Okay. Oh, you really you really lost your mind today, Aiden. You're usually a pretty reasonable, smart guy, but man. I know, and I want to keep giving him chances. I didn't boot him, by the way. I just got him sitting in timeout in the back so he can think about what he's done. <laughs> Steve, yeah, it's not like he wants to fight today. You're the most patient person in the world since Mother Teresa. I mean, you have patience and forgiveness that I've never seen before, and I, 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 recommend, I commend you on that. I'm a wicked sinner like everybody else. Some of us uh excel in certain areas there's a lot of areas i wish i would have excelled more in well hey steven if if i can prove that you're a reasonable and, and uh decent guy because if people would see what i had written about you before i actually knew you <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't let me in the room i would have i would have i don't hold anything against you man no i don't hold against any anybody here either you guys are my brothers hey, man you guys give me one second. Aiden, are you in a happier place now? I don't know. Are you Hello. willing to have a conversation on equal ground where you're not able to just boot me at any given moment at any given time? I'll make you this proposition, Aiden. This is the best offer I can do. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing my Pawn Stars. Moment. Oh, boy. This is my best offer. I'm hearing you. I let you stay uh -huh. and speak your mind. Uh-huh. You stay on the topic of the evening, which is in no way Kent Hoven or Cindy Lincoln. You agree to those terms and those terms specifically. Well, I gotta I ask you why. Very specifically. Uh, it's I, I it's really why, just a yes or no. No, but I'm asking you why. Sam. I I can answer that for you, Aiden. But you're not the person I'm asking, so uh, I know. I'm but I'm the person. Trying... I'm the person who's telling you. Uh, I've just uh, anything that microphone, uh, Danny, go ahead and explain anything that has been said about Kent or Cindy or either side or anybody on either side has been said one million times. Let's leave it alone. People have their feelings on what they're going to believe about Kent and the other people have the opposite version or whatever, but. To have that same conversation over and over and over again is ridiculous. Well, it's not the same conversation when he never actually get deals with it when he's confronted with it. All of the information is literally on my YouTube channel. Like that if video you that you were going to post, it, that you Aiden, didn't post. Go find the video and then. We'll I can't comment though. After. You blocked me though, Steven. You blocked because me on it. Because you make it. highly inappropriate comments. What did, what comment did I make that was so inappropriate? You, Come on. Well, now, man. I'm sorry to repeat this on a Christian channel, but you literally called me Kent Hovind's cock holster. That is a oh, that was a homosexual that was inappropriate comment to make on a Christian that channel. That was a different. I will admit that yeah. I did in fact call you Kent Hovind's cock holster. I've been that is very true. gracious to you, Aiden. No, Very I did, I did in fact you, say that. That's true. But I didn't say that on your show. That's all that I'm saying in return as far as that's concerned. But hey, I've only got a little bit of time. So if you want to quickly discuss Noah's Ark, I have a question for you in regards to it. Oh, boom. Okay. So as far as you, you claimed, you made a claim that it was 8,000 animal kinds of roughly speaking that Estimated made it onto the 8, Ark. 8,000. So where do you get that estimation from? You know what? I can't quote to you a source because I heard it on a YouTube channel. Okay. And then I looked into it on Google. Okay. There's not Aiden. a lot of information on it. 
Aiden, you could probably contact either creation.com or Answers in Genesis. Well, sure, that's great. I'm not I'm not necessarily concerned with that. I'm concerned with because I'm having a conversation with Stephen right now. So I'm I'm concerned with how Stephen gathered this information because he posited it the last time we had a discussion about this topic. So going from that point, so let's just I'll just assume for a moment that it's 8,000 animal kinds that are on this thing. So all in all, you got 16,000 creatures on this one boat, the dimensions of which are specifically given in Genesis, in cubits. Now we have the measurement conversion for cubits to modern systems of measurement. Mm -hmm. I just, I have to ask you because the arc specifically only has one window and according to Genesis, that window is closed over the course of the entire journey on the ocean. No, so it no, it is. Door. It had one door, but it may have had multiple windows. It had an there's eighteen only inch. There's only it one. had an eighteen inch opening that went around the entire arc. Yeah, I'm having a convert. I'm. I really wish I could actually talk with Stephen. This was purported as a debate between me and Stephen. Wait so. a minute. No, the debate was going to be set up for another time. You're on oh. an open panel tonight. Sure. Well, sure. I, okay. If that's <laughs> if that's how things are going to go, then I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I just thought okay. that was how things were going I, to no be arranged. No one told me it was a debate between you two. <laughs> well, apparently there's going to be a debate between us at some point okay. here because Stephen changed his mind. At one point, I he said he wasn't going to debate. I was assumption you were me. still injured in this major injury that you had. But yeah. Not do you want me to show it to you? What do you happened? want me to show it to well, you? Do you want me where, to send you? They're pretty gnarly where, screenshots. Where I can send you screenshots. Where are your injuries? Oh, it's on, oh, my, it's on knees. my knees. It's on both of my knees. How did it happen? Can you just tell us how it happened? Oh, sure. Um, I was going down the pathway that uh, runs along the uh, the river that goes through my city, mm -hmm. and there was somebody that was. They had somebody else in tow, like they had a. Uh, they had another e-scooter. It's not the same one as mine, but somebody was on rollerblades and holding on to that person as they were going along the pathway. They were going the same direction as myself. So they stopped all of a sudden and were taking up both of the pathways at that point in time. So I literally was not able to get past them. I tried ringing. I was already going 30 kilometers an hour. There really wasn't room to stop properly at that point in time. Mm. So I swerved out of the way to try and get out of their way. And I ended up going over the handlebars as a result. And oh, wow. I landed right on my knees. Um, oh. I've got knee pads now, thankfully. Oh, speaking. yeah, yeah, that's good. I've got knee pads. But it sounds like Steven was a little incredulous about my uh, about my injury over there, though, earlier. Are you are you incredulous about whether or not I'm injured, Steven? Because, like, I... I Do you I mean, want a balloon? Do you I want a balloon or something? Or something? Pa Pastor Chuck, I have to mute you because you have a terrible echo going no, on. No, that was that was the other guy. He's asking if I want a balloon because he's trying to marginalize oh, what happened. happened. Well, you know, well, because I, I if something horrible something like... happens to me, then it's it's something that I need a balloon for. But if it's something that happens to anybody else here, I'm sure that they get his thoughts and prayers. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't think you need a balloon, Aiden. Oh, I don't think so either. I'm, I'm too light. I need to gain some weight. I'll float away if I have a balloon. But that's that's a story for another day. Anyways, what I was trying to say to you though was is that the amount of methane that sixteen thousand creatures are going to produce over the course of you have two different interpretations of how long the events of the flood of the earth go on. About a year. There's another yeah. There's either forty days or forty nights or eleven months to a year, as most modern Christians interpret it as. So. All of that methane being confined in such a small space from I them exhaling. I correct you because I'm I'm checking out the arcencounter.com, and according to their information, it would have been six thousand seven hundred and forty-four animals total, not sixteen hundred. So that's well, no. I said I said that's it was actually... already cut in half the amount of methane you're speaking of. No, that that doesn't more than cut in half the amount of methane because I was talking about sixteen thousand creatures, and now it's reduced to a little under fourteen thousand. So that's according that's to not... the arc encounter. Okay, so that's not cutting it in half either way. <laughs> that's not well, math. Still, I have Aiden, you see my point though. Chatter. No, it reduces it by only. I just 2, took 000. the wind out of those sails. No, you didn't. You only reduced it by two thousand creatures. That's not half. That's well, not. Well, I said eight thousand kinds. That would have been at least sixteen hundred animals, Aiden. I know yes, they but teach basic every, math. No, they in teach Canada. two of every kind though. It's two of every kind. No, that sir. It's two of every. Good. It's two of every unclean. It's seven pair of every clean. So right, you're so not even, even more specific in those... on that. Oh, right, Aiden. no, you're right. Even more in that specific circumstance. So we got to factor in even more creatures than what we originally the were talking estimated about. Estimated total is six thousand seven hundred and forty-four. I read the number to you. 
which somehow begot 8 million animal species across the world. Do you see my art with a little matchbox horse on it? Oh, <laughs> very nice, Ryan. I do. Yeah, but I'm, just, I'm just curious how, like, it's such a small amount of species over what you purport to be only thousands of years somehow proliferated into 8 million different species, none of which, by the way, can yeah. interbreed with one another because they are so Aiden, genetically have distinct. Have you ever from had pet bunnies? Uh, it's I've not very had pet reasonable. Rabbits, no. No, my no own parents, it's not. My, my, my own parents have seven children. It's very reasonable. So only one kind, though, of those animals, like things like penguins and seals, they decided that you from Turkey, I, they I wandered honestly, all the way to I Antarctica. I can't tell you if penguin is considered a clean animal or not. I've never no, but considered that's... eating a penguin, to be honest. But did they wander all the way from the Ark to Antarctica <laughs> and lower South America right. from well, where they were says, in modern Turkey? It says that God brought them to the Ark. Now, does that mean they walked the whole way? I'm not sure. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob could have literally he had a magic carpet gravitated them. them up and, yeah. and appeared them in the ark. I don't know how he did it, but God brought them to the ark. Plus, we know uh, okay. that the earth wasn't like it is now. The land masses weren't the same. We, we've talked about this before. Right, right, you're right. There's so much water that's described in the flood myth that it would literally take over twice the amount of water in not only all of the oceans across the world, but the If that's atmosphere. not willingly ignorant. Myths aren't true. Did y'all see my little Lego Statue of Liberty? It's not willingly my, ignorance. By the way, it's willfully ignorant, first of all, I, Stephen. And I secondly, yes, willful you ignorant ignorance. willingly? Well, no, I'm not because I know the story. I know the story and I know that it's not true because the evidence that we have in the modern geologic column and the modern understanding <laughs> of our evidence, world around Aiden? us, um, totally the evidence of the scientific evidence, body. Of course. Um, oh, unlike yours, <laughs> unlike yours, which is unbiased. Totally At least we admit to being biased to a whole Well, no, I have I've admitted readily that we don't we're biased. Hide it. Science, we don't science it up. absolutely <laughs> has always had, like, there have always been scientists with a bias, but science itself is not biased. Why okay. isn't that in the scientists textbooks? Scientists are biased. What, that scientists are biased? information is compiled by biased scientists. Yeah, and that's that's a basic inference. Biased hold on, hold on, hold on. You just asked why, why isn't that in the Why don't they notify their, their readers? Stop talking over me. Excuse it's me, my Steven. show. I'll Excuse talk me. over whoever Excuse I please, you. Aiden. Why don't they put that information in the textbooks? As because a that's a basic inference that you can make about any human being, that they're biased. Even according to your religion, human beings are inherently biased. So please tell me what person, without making a basic inference about what what human beings are and what they operate on would not realize inherently that human beings are biased. Hey, that's, a pretty, that's, about, that's about as ridiculous of a label as putting a do not eat label on mattresses. Like it's inherent how, that that's how the case. How did clams get on top of Mount Everest, Aiden? The um, they got on top of Mount Everest. Do I've not get eat label on a mattress is if somebody had tried to I eat mean, that mattress. There's no right, so there's a very small minority of people that are so ignorant about what's going on they need to be informed about extremely basic things. Prime, that's perfectly fine. That's part how of do... human nature, as what we described it earlier. Somebody asked hold me a on, question, on, though. How did, how did clams end up on Mount Everest? They is asked this, me, though. Is this what Ryan just asked? Yeah. Yeah, okay, how did they end okay, up on Mount ahead. Everest? So mountains, as far as we're concerned with um, with tectonic plates, plate tectonics, as far as mountains are concerned, are far younger than those of the ones that we find on the ocean floor. Far larger mountains like Mount Everest have been proven to be much younger because the rocks that we can carbon date and radiometrically date that are found on the upper layers of those mountains are shown to be younger than those on the lower layers of those mountains. But because over the course of millions of years, they were pushed up, in the case of the Rocky Mountains, the Himalayas were created by the collision of the Indian subcontinent with the rest of Asia. I believe that was about 100 million years ago, but we can get into that at another point. Okay. Anyways, the reason why you'll find clams on top of those mountains, though, is because those mountains are very young, and because when those um, yeah, they are when the plates right were pushed that. up, well, yeah, they're younger than the rest of the they're younger than the rest of the surface <laughs> of the earth that you see. I, okay, that's a pretty good explanation. Um, even though I don't believe it. Well, like here, um, let me give you let me real quick. I'll just finish this up. Let me give you an illustrative example. So the two main mountain belts that run across America, the Rocky Mountains and Appalachia. Aiden, Appalachia think, is much older. I think older. you have the echo. Do you have this playing on YouTube also or something? Oh, do I? Hold on, just give me a sec. I, I it's either you or Pastor Chuck. Um, I'll close all of my other tabs here. Maybe it was me. Hold on. I think it's gone. Okay. Maybe it was me. I'm sorry. Did Danny leave? Uh, Danny did leave. Hopefully he's coming back. Pastor, I think it's on your side. Do you have two I tabs have no open? I have volume on my laptop. It can't be. 
Huh. But I'll just I'll just go through this real quick, um, and then we can try to resolve that just before I lose my train of thought. The Appalachian Mountains in Eastern America are much older than the Rocky Mountains in Western America. And one of the ways that we can tell that is based on how flat the Appalachian Mountains are compared to the Rocky Mountains. And the reason why that's the case is erosion. They've been around above the surface of the earth much longer. And therefore, as a result of that, the wind and the tides and other natural forces have had much more time to buffer against them and basically flatten them out. So the Himalayans, which you see, which are the tallest mountain range on the world, are actually by a one of the products of that because of tectonic plates the youngest mountain range on the earth okay so uh stephen how would you respond to that i think the fact that all the clams are found closed means that they were buried rapidly which yeah. would be explained by the flood narrative well all fossils are, are well by rapid burial Right. Not well. Yeah. No. That's actually a brilliant point. That all fossils are preserved by rapid burial. That's literally exactly what I was about to say. Is, is that you only get fossilization of creatures when they are buried rapidly. But I only say that because the reason why this comes up all the time, as far as the fossil record is concerned, is because what I've heard from a lot of creationists. Somebody just unmuted, and I'm hearing the echo again. I'm not sure who just unmuted, but whoever that was, that's who's causing yeah. the echo. Yeah, it wasn't me for the fourth time, Stephen. It might have been me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to be muted when I'm not talking. I think it may okay. be you, Ryan. Yeah, I think it is because he just muted and it's gone uh, uh, now. Okay, so as a policy, everybody just mute when you're not speaking. Sure. Okay. Um. Oh God, where was I? Where was I? I was talking about. You were saying how you understand now the narrative of the flood and. You're no, that wasn't that seeking was, there was something else salvation that was, with fear that's right oh my god you're right holy holy crap i didn't realize now that you've clarified it's all so clear now yep hallelujah brother no i'm just kidding um as far as the flood is concerned though when it comes to the geologic column of fossil burials if we saw that everything was buried rapidly then things that are much larger, things like whales and sharks and lions and elephants, we would find those buried at the bottom because they're the heaviest. That makes sense. If they're heavier, they're going to sink to the bottom. But that's not what we see. What we see in the fossil record is very distinctive layers, and those layers do not mix with one another. We don't see a trilobite in a, in a layer that's only 10,000 years old, for example, because trilobites have not existed for millions of years at this point. And the reason why is because it has taken an immense amount of time for each one of these layers to form. That would not be the case if they were all rapidly deposited in a flood. Aiden, that would make sense, except they have petrified trees all across the earth that go through millions of years of your guys' made up time frame oh well you know what i actually got a perfect response to that there's a study that i could post in the chat that specifically refutes what you're talking about there are specific trees whose roots yes will go beneath other different no, layers the entire but the trunk tree itself, I've no no, no seen i was just about to say hundreds and hundreds just let me finish Stephen. let me finish through Please. millions of years. No, you're not going to let me finish. Okay. Uh, rescue ah, advice. Ah, so you're going to get offended when I say the flood myth, but you can say things like made up offhandedly, and I'm supposed to just take that with a shrug. You know what? Okay. You're right. I'm sorry. I take that back, Aiden. Anyways, what I'm trying to communicate through this, though, is that the trees that you're discussing are only trees that we can observe can be buried up to extreme depths and still put down roots below those depths. They are still trees that are capable of surviving and growing underground to a very large extent. And I can give you a couple of studies why that's the case. So we have to use Occam's razor at that point and decide, okay, either this is the case of it being an example of a tree that we can readily observe in reality all around us, or it's the case that this is one of the only things that we have at our disposal to explain a myriad of other things which are unexplainable within the, the flood narrative. I won't say myth, the flood narrative. Right, because I could easily come back and say you guys developed another theory 
to plug the holes in your original. Tire. No, that's what religion does, though. You take something that we are, haven't had you to make... plug anything in you do, two thousand plus years <laughs> of written word. Ken <laughs> Hovind was consistent Ken for three thousand years. I'm only bringing this up because it's pertinent to what we're talking about. People is like Ken Hovind. Though... Yes, it is. Yes, it is. People like Kent Hovind wouldn't make an entire career about rebutting and refuting, so to speak, evolution if you didn't have to plug holes as new evidence emerged to contradict, to contradict ideas that were already present within scripture. The history of the church has been nothing but the history of plugging holes that have become available when more data has been presented to us. Now, if you want to accept those pluggings of those holes as fact based on your religion, then that's fine, but that is an fact what it is science doesn't assume anything Stephen. the scientific method and how it's conducted does not assume anything and science what is black matter as... aiden you mean dark matter dark matter yes what is it well it's a placeholder right because we no, don't know what not. really goes there no, it's it's not a placeholder. We can prove that's we can incorrect. prove that it exists. That's incorrect. Well, it's a placeholder. See, you're, see look at you, look at you, Stephen. That's I'm not giving you the answer wow. you want, it's and you're getting plug. all upset with me. It's another. And you're getting plug. all upset with me. Is this? Hold on. You just gave me a question. What is this? And I gave you an answer, and you're like, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. That's not very ingen. That's not very ingenuous in a debate. Because we both know you're going to do this dance no matter what we say. No, no, I'm not. Because unlike you, Stephen, I don't have a pre-planned script when I try to deal with things like this. I can actually change what I think. A pre-planned script? Yes, you've even I talked about it. I haven't changing God, but I'm grateful Hold on. for that, you've even talked. You've even talked about this before, both on your show and Chuck's, about this line of reasoning, quote-unquote, that you go through with people where you ask them this question, and then based on what they say, you'll ask them this question. And based okay. on what they say, you'll ask them this. You so you absolutely anything? do have a pre-prepared narrative of what you're going to say before you say oh it. i do have an opening dialogue a no, prepared more than opening an opening dialogue, dialogue. You've, gone, you've gone through more than Dang. an opening dialogue's worth of discussion about what you would do given somebody's answers to the specific questions that you had posed <laughs> Aiden, so, it, it, seems like, it seems like my rebuttals were more offensive to you to than all the way your back. statements were to me to but it's not offensive before. to me i'm only pointing out something that you yourself have conducted Never mind. what ryan well, the James Webb Telescope was supposed expected to see all the way back in time to when galaxies were forming. However, every galaxy it saw was already fully formed as far away as it could see. So how are quasars explainable given that? And why do we not see any quasars close to ourselves but can only see them back in the very earliest stages of the universe, even before the James Webb Space Telescope? That was the case. I mean, quasars are objects that are so bright that they literally outshine galaxies that are orders of magnitude closer than those quasars. And they are not things that we see anywhere except in the earliest stages of our universe. So there absolutely are things that precede the formation of galaxies. The problem is, is that when you look back that far, like with the James Webb Space Telescope, and you're only using the red spectrum of light when everything is so red shifted over to it, you're not able to see with as much definition as you would be able to see an object with something like visible light for now. Okay. Now that's not always going to be the case. I'd actually say that the James Webb Space Telescope, not quite like the Hubble Space Telescope where they would actually have astronauts go up and service it. Unlike the Hubble though, the James Webb Space Telescope has software on it that's readily changeable. It's readily adjustable as we come up with better software in order to fine tune it given the data it provides us. Now. Is it going to find more definitive evidence in the earliest stages of our universe of how galaxies formed? I'm not sure, because that data isn't available yet. However, based on the data that we do have available to us right now with things like quasars and the cosmic microwave background, what I can say is that galaxy formation is something that, roughly speaking, did not happen for a few million years after the formation of the universe because of the temperature of the universe being so hot that even basic molecules weren't able to form for, I believe, some 300,000 years until after the Big Bang and its initial event. Sorry, I'm dominating the conversation. Somebody else go ahead. Well, that's a little bit beyond my expertise. I'd have to I'd have to have somebody like Jason Lyle sit next to me to be, to be able to really uh, respond to that. I got I to gotta tell you, I have a question for Aiden. Go ahead, Christian. Aiden, I think you and I may have a similar view about this. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. My biggest issue with the, the idea of the traditional rendition of the Noah's Ark story being 4,400 years ago 
is genetic proliferation, as you mentioned earlier. And there is no number that makes it reasonable, whether it's 1,000, 4,000, 16,000, or 50,000. When I had my discussion with Kent Hoven, I was discussing the evolution of the horse's foot. And I told him that you have to go one of two ways. Either A, you have to acknowledge drastic morphological change, or B, your number of species on the arc increases dramatically. So you can't really have it, you know, without accepting one of those two. So that being said, genetic proliferation for the last 4,400 years, taking some number between 1,000 and 50,000 animal species and turning it into literally 8 million animal species is not just impossible, it's radically impossible. Well, do you share that point of view? I do, and I find it very funny that the same people that will unironically try to claim that some 10,000, whether you think it's 1,000, 10,000, 50,000, they think that over the course of thousands of years, they proliferated into this number of species, but those very same people will tell you things like, oh, well, we can't see a dog become a non-dog within a human lifetime, therefore it can't become anything but a dog. Well, if that's the case, then we wouldn't have such amazing diversification of species across the world. At some point, as you said, there's either well, that's actually happen. that's actually one reason that I I believe that uh, even like Brother Hoven is a Darwinian without wanting to accept that because to believe that a few thousand species can diversify into several million species which are dramatically distinct from one another and not through artificial selection but through a much slower and less guided natural selection you have to be a Darwinian to believe that. It's either that or you have to believe that God has such an incredible hold over every event in the universe that he specifically engineered all of those creatures from that point to be exactly what they are now. But then the question comes into play of, well, then clearly if that's the case, then why does the Bible claim that Adam and Eve named every single species upon the earth? Because that can't be the case. If every single species upon the earth, every kind that ever existed and walked upon this earth, if they were all named by Adam and Eve, then we wouldn't have a much larger proliferation of those species upon the earth than we would have had before. Well, Either this that... is one point that I've made to the gentleman. I don't know how often you watch the broadcast, Ed, but there's been numbers of times that me and some of the fellows here have discussed this and, and my views on Darwinian worldview and things like that. And my position is that, you know, I, I believe in the Bible. My position is it's not possible for us to have any idea what any of those original created animals must have looked like. It does give us some vague categories. If you're going to make an allowance for scripture for the sake of argument, it does give us the vague categories of fowl of the air, fish of the sea, etc. But the idea that we would have any idea what the morphology or the behavior of those original animals would look like is ridiculous because not only do we know about selection, if you look at the Noah's Ark narrative, the way it's usually accepted, then you have this insane super selection. So it becomes that much more abstract to go back in time uh, biologically. Yeah, as far as, far as um, <clears throat> pardon me, as far as the um, proliferation of species upon the earth in such a brief amount of time is concerned, what I've always been curious about and what I've always asked creationists and never really necessarily gotten uh, a sufficient answer to is when it comes to all of those species coming out of this one boat over such a long period of time on this on this arc as he says it is how could they have possibly not only kept all of those animals on that boat but kept all of the food for those animals on that boat not even mentioning all of the species which are specifically carnivorous. This is post-Eden, so there are carnivorous species on the Earth. Death has come into the world at this point in time, so there are only carnivorous species. So uh, Noah would have had to have taken other fresh animals onto the Ark as a necessity, because there are plenty of animals that will not eat already killed game. They have to eat it live, otherwise they just won't consume it. He has to bring all the food for the herbivores and he has to somehow find a way to light a torch or have some sort of light source down there in order to distribute that food without causing a methane fire of such epic proportions that the arc basically goes up like a firecracker so as far as that is concerned that very clearly says to me that 
this is a it's a mythical tale and i say it's a mythical tale because i'm sure that there are events like very regional floods that the bible the biblical flood are based upon I know one of the things that um, a lot of people will try to say is, oh, well, every society has a different flood narrative. Well, yeah, all those societies also happen to live next to rivers. So it's not <laughs> that surprising that they're all going to have a flood myth, especially Mesopotamian societies where the river doesn't flood necessarily on a regular schedule like Egypt. Well, you know, if you look at Australia, you know, this is one example that's often given to, uh, at, at the very most generous, challenge the common flood narrative. Uh, is the the very niche marsupials which are in Australia, New Zealand, and Tasmania. So you don't just have a collection of marsupials, but you have extremely niche marsupials. You have marsupial tigers and, and the such like. So you have areas uh, that when there was not a mammalian group to occupy a niche, one developed, but it developed from a marsupial ancestor. So it's occupying mm -hmm. the niche like a tiger or like something else, but it's doing it as a marsupial because of how selection works. And so we know with beyond any reasonable doubt that something that is marsupial can greatly diversify to fill niches in places like Australia. Um, that I guess that's, I don't know. I, I don't understand it. To me, it's about like the flat earth thing. You know, you get to a certain point where it's like, come on guys. I, some people, it's, it gets to a point, and I'm not saying anybody here says it, I'm not sure if they purport this, but I've, I've heard people go as far as saying things like, you know, dinosaur bones are only put there for Satan to test our faith or something like that. It's like, it, it gets to that kind of point in my mind where I'm like, yeah, that's, okay, that's not true. Yeah. You either, you either have to, that's without a question a nut job. Well, yeah, no, and I, like I said, I don't think anybody in this room, and I, it's been confirmed now, nobody in this room holds that position, but I've just most certainly yeah. heard it from people, and I only oh. bring it up because it's a good illustrative example of if somebody is so dedicated to believing in something, if they are so steadfast in whatever you want to call it, whether it be faith or religion or anything of that sort of thing, any sort of idea that somebody tethers themselves to so fundamentally, they will make massive logical leaps in order to try and make up for that idea. And I bring this up because I one thing I hear in response whenever I say things like that is like, oh, well, that's just like you. Well, yeah, to, only to the extent that I am a fellow human being. And yeah, I'm going to have bias like we just mentioned earlier. Everyone's <laughs> going to have bias. But I've said it before on occasions. I want there to be a God. It'd be great if there was a God. I have another a question God. for you. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just think no, about stuff like that. Um, this is really a little bit unrelated to the extent that I don't personally believe in abiogenesis, but I think it's very interesting to study. And the other day I was discussing with some of the fellows here that I have as of very recently, a bit of a different take. The biggest hurdle that pretty much all people who fall in the category of creationists have against abiogenesis is mathematics. Well, I was thinking about this the other day. And I think it's very possible to make the argument that the leap from single to multicellular reproductive organisms is quite possibly a larger mathematical improbability than abiogenesis self-replicating organic proteins themselves. What do you think of that? Um, I, I hate to I hate to burst your bubble, but I actually disagree with you there. I Tell actually I'm curious. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, it's the it's the fact that multicellularity is something that we've actually observed within laboratory settings that have evolved within as little as six days. We've been able to get a singular cellular organism within very, and I will say this, it was in very specific conditions, but they were able to put it under circumstances where it began um, replicating multicellularly within six days. So I don't think that multicellularity is the biggest hurdle to overcome with this in the slightest. I think that abiogenesis as far as inorganic compounds forming anything that is as complex as RNA is really the only building block that we have left because the Miller-Urey experiment bridged us almost all the way there. When that well, weekend. I've always felt like that once you get to a uh, complex multicellular and especially sexual reproduction, at that point that the floodgate is wide open for, for morphological change. Well, yeah, um, no, definitely. Uh, mitosis so my is a thoughts, much more slower way of proliferating. Yeah, Sorry, my thought was how do you get from, from single cell to multi-cell and, and especially to the exchanging of genes and sexual reproduction? That seems to be a major hurdle, but I understand what you're saying. I, I don't know. That's the reason I was asking. 
Oh, okay. Um, sorry, I might have misunderstood you then. I guess what you're, I guess to just clarify, you're more talking about the leap from um, mitosial production. To I, I really am. I really am. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I definitely do have to agree that it's a gap. I don't think it's as big of a gap as the one between um, the developing of um, base RNA compounds into complex DNA compounds. I think that's a bit of a bigger one. But as far as that one is concerned, we can explain up to, I believe it was, I, I believe sexual reproduction is at least it's, it's theorized that it only came about as a result of a mutation that rather than it splitting off and making a direct copy of itself, it instead, um, it instead made another copy of, uh, or developed. So you think it was just a random, like it was just a random mutation. It wasn't some crazy conditional thing. Um, I think I think it's actually a combination of the two. I think that there I think the mutation by itself wouldn't be able to survive without specific environmental conditions. And I don't think environmental conditions specifically wouldn't bring about the huge change that a mutation needs to bring. So I think it's kind of a combination of both of them is what I'm trying to say. Let me ask say. you something else while I have you on here. Um uh do you believe it's reasonable uh to draw a line anywhere uh in genetics to stop the assumption of uh, relatedness? Um, no, and I only say that that's not the case because if you go back further and further along the fossil record and even after the fossil record, any actual living tissue that we have of the life that we have on this earth today, if we trace it further and further back, we will find that they eventually do have identical morphological changes that split off from a common ancestor. And I don't think that there's any single point in which we have found where there's just a complete deviation from that. Now, is it possible that all life on Earth could have started in multiple different places, but eventually homogenized into one thing? I, I have heard that theory before. That is definitely a possibility, but I don't think that that has as much validity per se as the idea that we all share a common ancestor. And do you... Uh... Do you accept that soft tissue has been found in dinosaur bones? Or absolutely. Okay. Okay. Well, how how would it be preserved for millions of years? It's actually a really good question. I had it myself. I actually went to the specific exhibit that has this soft tissue you're uh, talking about on display. It's in the Royal Terrell Museum in Alberta. Um, yeah. I went to go see it, and they have a brilliant explanation of why it was able to be preserved. It was because of the specific way that it was buried. Not only buried but the um the layers that formed directly after its burial i forget the specific name of them i'd have to look it up but all i could tell you off the top of my head right before i'm about to get back to work is from what i read it was a specific layer of material that came directly after its burial that allowed it to have much more um much more preservation than most dinosaur bones because most of the time what you see is not necessarily the bone itself with fossilization. You see a calcification of something that basically fills in the gap of what the bone used to be, but that isn't the case with this one specific Aiden. one you're talking about. But real quick, real quick, Christian. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'll just say that one that we have found, if we found those all the time, if it was not just one incredible outlier out of other th more tens than one. of thousands. Many, many have been found, I thought. There's, there's more, more than, than one. one. Is there more than one? There's more I'd, than one. I would have to look into that. Maybe there is. I'd have to look into it, but I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure but, as far as by the way, claim, but there's um, more than one. I would like you mentioned Alberta, and that made me think of a book that I have that I bought at uh, Creation uh, Ministries International. This man here, Vance Nelson, he uh, he lives in Alberta, Red Deer, I believe. He compiled this book. What a poor soul. No, I'm this book here that shows. Can you see it? No, I can see it. Okay, it shows examples of all over the world of dragon legends that exist all over the world. Uh, and, you know, different drawings and things of dinosaurs that could be found in, you know, carved into buildings and caves and painted and all this. It's a very good book if you ever want to get a copy of it. It's uh, very interesting. This is the name of it, and this is the author. You know, it's, no. it's interesting that you bring that up, and um, this is actually a topic that isn't discussed too frequently, but fossilization um 
as far as us recognizing and collecting fossils of creatures is not necessarily as modern of a practice as we think that it is. It's actually something that we can observe going all the way back to the ancient Greeks. I'm pretty sure Thucydides in his history of the wars actually mentions uh, the carting off of the fossils of what was called a giant that we can now determine was a, a dinosaur skeleton. It was taken from one of the uh, Greek uh, Hellenic city-state allies of Sparta during the uh, Peloponnesian Wars. But anyways, I, I only bring that up because we have been looking at these massive fossils for thousands of years at this point and trying to piece them together, trying to figure out what they look like, how they behaved, how they acted. And we have gotten such a huge myriad of different conclusions drawn from very similar day. Like what you showed there with the different dragons, it's a really good example of that because you're right. Like you'll see a motif of a dragon like creature come up very frequently, but you'll notice that that dragon, like a Chinese dragon, for example, is going to look very markedly different from a European dragon. And that's a result of us taking these bones and compiling them and assembling them in different ways and then going, yeah, this is what this thing looked like. This okay. is what that thing looked like. Um, I do have to go though. Okay. I, will, I will only say real quick, if anybody one has more any question. final question. Okay, one final question. Okay, it's kind of a double question. Um, oh boy. Hey, Christian, I was just about to give the floor to Stump because he's been quiet for so long and now you're hitting us with a double question. No, go ahead. Let, let him have his question. I mean, because, okay. because it, I never you can't respond anything because it goes on so as long. As soon it goes, as it goes on forever and ever. this, it's going to Stump you can't, and then you can't, Pastor You can't Chuck. even uh, challenge anything because it goes on and then it changes, it changes things. I know. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good technique to uh, hide things. But go ahead. Yeah. Oh really? Uh, I mean, I'll I'll exact yeah, I'll address really. things one at a time if you want. Like if you no. really think I'm go trying ahead. to you hide can, anything, I have nothing to hide, sir. But you can go, go ahead and make that little drive-by assertion of yours before I go. Let, uh, it's let, very let, brave let of you. you. Very brave. Ask this thing. Um, uh, two-part question, Aiden. Number one, do you think that uh, a panspermia for single-celled or self-replicating molecules is reasonable? And number two, if you do think panspermia is reasonable, do you think it's an indication of outside intelligent life? I think that panspermia, if it is true, and I, as far as your first question, all I have to say is I, I don't know because panspermia, as far as how it could have happened, there are so many different methods through which it could have happened. Now, I don't think that intelligent life, to try and answer your second one, is the more likely of the two. I think that it's probably through naturalistic causes that panspermia happens. Um, okay. Uh, I look, look, I managed to answer it without going on for 10 minutes. Look, it's a miracle. I'm done, Stump. You can have my apologize for hogging the live stream. No, it's okay. Let, let Aiden go. We got to go. No, I, I could I could answer you. You were saying that I was trying to be sneaky or something like that earlier. You have something to say. Oh, go ahead. I just know you yes, said uh, Aiden probably, probably versus about 20 Stump. minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, you said that the, the on the ark they had a carnivorous diet when, when scripture doesn't say that. Well, some of them would have had to have had a carbonivorous diet because A, death would have already entered into the earth at that point in time, and B, if they didn't have a carnivorous diet and all of them were herbivorous, then that would make another huge chasm of a gap as far as how you can explain such a huge proliferation of different species in such a short time. If they're all herbivorous, then they would have had to have completely developed different ways of existing at that point because this is post eden this is after death has already entered into the world it's not like god is making a big huge sweeping change on these creatures at this point so you would have then have to explain how carnivorism developed over only a few thousand years well that's your idea you're using scripture that you don't believe in to say that death came in the world of eden but scripture says that after noah's flood he told noah that now the he would have a carnivorous diet so if death wouldn't have been happening at, at the as part of the uh, of the ark before, before the ark, before the flood. So, of course, I'm I mean, using scripture. I don't believe in to argue with you because if I just go off the basis that I don't believe it, we're not able to move forward and have a discussion whatsoever. And that's not very interesting, is well, it? You, you can't use scripture. You don't believe in it. If, if you I absolutely can, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm I doing it right now. You. I just told you that he spoke to Noah and said that now you would have a carnivorous diet after the flood. When he, right, right, right. Flood. After death, and you're, and you're telling me across no. the entire world. You're telling me no, no science says you got to develop. You got to develop. You haven't let me finish my sentence. Go ahead. You have to develop thousands of years to go here and there, but then you're trying to prove it with the Bible, which you don't believe. So it's, that's no, what that's not, argument. It's not true in the slightest, actually. What that I was trying ridiculous. to say, what I was trying to say was, is that if death had not already entered into the world at that point in time then the flood would have been useless because nothing would have been killed in it. 
So yes, obviously, up until the flood, and right before it, when the animals got on it, there would have had to have been some animals that had a carnivorous diet. Because otherwise, after God made the change of death coming into the world, there's no scripture whatsoever that says that God made some change that made a group of animals carnivorous after it. The only thing that you have to say that is that God said to Noah personally and for his family that only they then could have a carnivorous diet. That does not mean that the other animals then follow that same rule. You're just making a broad assertion that has no backing whatsoever. So where, that's absolutely then show me Show me where scripture, since, since you want to use scripture, where it says that animals were eating flesh at that time before the flood. Point to it for me. Oh, I'm, I would just explain to you why that would be the case. No, I don't want you to explain God, to me. I want you to use scripture because you're trying to prove with scripture. Show me the scripture that says it. I, I pointed one to I'll, you. I'll point, it, I'll, point it, I'll point it to you as soon as you find me the scripture that says God suddenly allowed all of the animals that got off the mark to uh, I told you where it was. All of a sudden. This is in Genesis no, chapter didn't. 9 when he spoke to you Noah. Said that he, to, he said that he spoke to Noah. He didn't say that to any of the other animals. So you're moving well, the goalposts there. God doesn't speak to the animals. Well, no, but he would obviously he would beings. obviously be the one that dictates their behavior. Uh, no, he okay. would be the one that dictates their behavior right. and their nature, would he not? Okay, well, I, I just wanted to make my point. Like I said, it, it takes an hour to get in to say something, and it's already a different subject. By well, that's okay. a lovely little sniping that's remark you made at the end there, Stump. That's a lovely little sniping remark you made. It's very well, it's cute. True. It's true. Well, you run on and on, and then by the time you... You get back to it. It's I directly like, addressed everything you said. There's nothing that I did not address in what you said. Oh, yeah, so I know, I know. that's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know I'm not going to prove anything to you. It ain't going to happen. So it's, it's good. I mean, you know, I just want to prove it. Make that point. If, you're try, if you're trying to prove that you're not going to change my mind, I can levy that exact same accusation back at you. So I don't know where that's, that's going to get you. You won't change my mind. You're right. All right. Well, off of that, have a good rest of the night, everybody. Uh, if anybody has any. What was that? Sorry. Have a good rest of your night, everybody. Take care. Hey, sorry if I was hogging it. What was no? I, I just I just there's no there? there's the, there's no point to when someone runs on and on and on and on and you can't even get a counterpoint point in to, to say anything if they just run on. That's just that's a tactic that people use when they don't know what they're speaking of and they just want to throw stuff out there and then by the time it's over they're, they're sitting you can't remember what they said unless you're taking notes at shorthand. Be, so it's okay whatever i mean oh well curiously a christian do you believe what do you believe about Noah's flood since we're talking about it um i got a couple of thoughts on it one i think it was further back in time than we realized probably 12 to fifteen thousand years um and two i'm really not convinced that it was global hmm. i'm not saying that it wasn't but i'm not particularly convinced that it was do you believe that scripture says it was global I believe what the scripture says. So if I thought it said that, then I would believe that. The only problem with that, though, uh, Christian, is um, if if there were places in the uh, world that didn't get flooded, then all God could have just told Noah to move. <laughs> yeah, to those. Uh, that... Welcome back, Danny. I can't help but right. notice what a uh, wonderful and weird timing you have. <laughs> Yeah, I, it is what it is. I know that that was a nowhere conversation going to nowhere. He sounded like he wanted to fight us. He got him. Yeah, he, you know, he, I don't like it when one person dominates and dominates. Uh, yeah. He's really doing that. Yeah. And even if you... I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, even if you dominate the conversation, there's really no need to be such... So He's a smart, smart, smart dude, but you don't have to be a jerk. You don't have to be condescending. You know, the smartest human on planet Earth can still be deceived by the enemy. True that. Look at Solomon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, if, to go back to the flood, Ryan, yeah, I think you made a real good point there. If it wasn't global, then God could have just moved the animals. Well, Pastor Chuck, them. you have a terrible yeah. echo. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I have. Who has an uh, echo? Me? Somebody else? No, it's Pastor Chuck. He's having audio issues tonight. Um, so I know he's testing it, and Pastor, keep testing it when you have to. Uh, he just wants to sound like the great Oz. He just wants to sound like, you know, the great and mighty Oz. Everyone else is hearing that, right? I mean, Big Bad yes, Mama in the comments wrote Echo. Yeah, I, I could hear it too. Okay. All right, it's not just me then. 
Oh, those other people are on Chuck's chat. Okay, I got you. No wonder I'm not seeing them. I was confused. That's where all the the action is. So if you want to go over to Chuck's, go ahead. Okay, I may do that. Yeah, I may do yeah, that. Don't offend me. Do it. Okay. Is he having a separate broadcast? Yeah. Well, well, what I have it my is PC. is we both stream from Streamyard, and it goes out to my channel and his channel. Oh, it's okay. like a separate comment section kind of thing. Right. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm. 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 It's the schism. On the phone, and I've also got uh, my PC is on YouTube also, and so I can change channels on the PC and still stay here with you guys. Am I, on the phone. Am I echoing now? No. No. Oh. A little right. bit, but not nearly right. as bad. I'm, I'm, I'm adjusting my microphone. Just actually, uh, okay. Father so, Krabs, I don't wait. know if I'm subscribed to you. What's the name of your uh, channel? My Pastor Chuck official. Okay, I'll go. I'll go look for it right now. Logan, could you possibly post the link to Pastor Chuck's channel in the private chat? Um, Pastor. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still getting an echo. Still getting an echo. I know. We're right. trying to figure this out. Danny, are we sure that it's not your mic? No, it's Pastor Chuck's. Okay. Uh, I, I don't have a mic. I just have the Bluetooth. I don't uh, even have a computer. I'm, I use a phone. Yeah, I'm on my phone as well. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so Stump. Hey, you. Bubba wants to say hey. Okay. Hey. What's up, Bubba? <laughs> Hey, baby. hey, Bubba. We're hanging out with your dad. Tell these people to quit asking me about horse evolution at 6 in the morning. Say, like, quit that. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about, dad? We're talking about horses and how God made horses, and they always had pulls. Don't say yay and amen. Yay and amen. <laughs> okay, hallelujah. Amen, Bubba. Oh, Bubs is one of the good ones, man. Everybody, welcome to the party, Mr. Dustin. Dustin! Hey, guys. Dustin, brother. Dustin. All right, good to see you. Hey, What's up, brother Dustin? Hey, guys. Stump was just talking about how you have really no grasp of the word whatsoever. <laughs> and then you what? shut up. No, don't lie. Don't lie. No, Stump hey. never says anything about anybody. Hey. Am not, I not on here. now? Firmware has been updated. I don't think you're echoing, Pastor. Now maybe it needed that firmware update. Huh, Something okay. Real low. Uh, when is the last one, time two, you three. restarted your computer? Am I echoey? You're no, that good. Okay. Sounds pretty low, don't it? Sound normal? Sound low to me. Maybe you're it's me. Dustin, why were you gone for the best part of the conversation? Me? Well, I've been working yeah, all that's day. That's another thing. It said Stephen put me in backstage. So I had to Got restart him. my computer. Uh-huh. And then I, I didn't put you in backstage. Then, well, that's what the sign said. I'm telling you what it said. I'll tell you what. If you would go to your email, I sent you the invite to be co-host. It's been in your email for like three days. And then you can let people in and out. All right. Hang on. I right, put stump so in that not, place I'm when you were on your echoing, retreat. Right? Okay, I'm no, echoing. but your volume is low. My volume's low. Okay. Yes. I can fix that real quick. I'll put it in the chat for you. The uh, fiber. Uh, Ghost, your volume's really high. Can you turn yours down a little while we're at it? Is that better? Uh, still a little high. What about now? Uh, I don't think it's being changed at all. I think that's the first time I've ever really had an exchange with Aiden, unless I'm forgetting something. Uh, I'm sorry you got him on a little bit of a... Uh, well, he wasn't really belligerent, but... He kind of started out belligerent, but he cooled off. Yeah. I, I wish you could have met him on an intellectual night. You guys could have had some real good dialogue. I mean, he, you know, you can tell there's a lot of tension between you and him, but I think after a few minutes, he kind of toned down. All right, how's the mic uh, now? Your mic volume's good. It sounds good? great. Okay. Now, here. Why I is everybody echoing? Here's the deal, Pastor. I still hear the echo, but 
It's only when you're not speaking. When you're speaking, there's no echo. So when you're not talking, will you just keep muted? And then I, I hear ready echo to talk Stephen now. Mute? Stephen, I just heard you echoing. Yeah, Brother Chuck, like you may need like a pop filter on your mic or something. Mike, what? What's up? What's wrong? Yeah. Get like a pop filter or something. Oh, yeah. Get like a pop filter or something. What it sounds like is what happens on my computer when I'm on StreamYard, but also oh. have the video playing on YouTube. Yeah. I have to Testing. mute YouTube or stop YouTube, that video. YouTube, you're just using it for the comments. Section. Testing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I have my PC volume turned down to nothing, so I can. Yeah. It would, it would be very confusing to everyone if I didn't. Mm hmm. Hello. Hello. Because you know the PC, the 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 YouTube on my PC is about maybe ten seconds behind uh, the YouTube on my phone here, the the chat on my phone. So that would be very confusing if I had my PC volume turned up. I can feel it coming in the air. <laughs> One. Oh. I switch right. settings again. How's this sound? When you, you sound fine. There's no echo. When you're you sound 10 years speaking, younger. There's a terrible echo. 10 years younger. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so the sound is fine. It's the echo. Yes, sir. And I never <laughs> had an echo before. Whatever. That whatever wasn't for you guys. I just don't get it sometimes. I never put my mute on, and no one's ever complained. That's all I'm. That's weird because technology always works so well without problems. <laughs> right, Father Charles. Yeah. Were you having a, a show on your on your channel? That was a mass confusion. So it's no. Okay. I just you missed Aiden. Danny I know. also missed Aiden. You oh, wait a minute. The weirdest I, timing. I did not. Oh, I did not miss Aiden. I wasn't even shooting at him. If I was shooting at him, I'd have hit him. <laughs> <laughs> you said I didn't miss Aiden. I knew exactly where he was. Yeah. No, I just dip out because what I. Man. That's one of the ways that I can try to be nicer because when somebody starts going on the offensive and starts being a jerk like that i have a hard time keeping my mouth shut so for me it's better to dip out and just calm down and come back that's i have a i have anger issues so i'm, just, I'm trying to deal with them you have anger issues huh yeah i i do i got danny i have some uh pretty severe PTSD issues. So I, I know everybody throws that word around. Everybody has it nowadays, but that's part of the, that's one of the side effects is uh, why well, it can be just having uh, issues with anger. I can't imagine any member of law enforcement retiring and not having some level of anxiety. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And unfortunately, like I've had them both. I've had the military side of it. Um, yeah, but the military is really good at it. They weren't always good at it, but they're good at it now. They're, I got more help from the VA than I did for the in, in a couple of years than I did in the 25 years using private sector um, health care. And it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. But nonetheless, that's, that's why I do what I do. If I dip out, it's just not because anybody – did anything, but I just don't want to get into a. Uh, I don't want to say something that I'm going to regret later on. So for me, it's easier just to dip out. And I have a hard time when people bully people. It's that's one of my pet peeves. But the, you know, my yeah. biggest pet peeves are, uh, yeah, you know, you like screw around with an old person, a woman, or a baby, or you're a bully. I, I just. I can't deal with it. I can't handle it. And I'm yeah. trying to. I'm getting better. You know, I uh, actually Batman share a lot of Danny's was really on this. Yesterday. Um, I feel the same way Danny does in a lot of ways. I was actually bullied in school when I was a young kid. I was, in, I don't know, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, you know, before I got to high school. 
And uh, that really does something to a person. It really causes you to just be extremely defensive when it's not necessary. And I kind of sympathize with what Danny's saying. Steven, send me the invite you're talking about again. It said it um, expired 15 minutes or whatever. I'll do that in the background while Dustin and Stump debate about anything. <laughs> um, Stump? I don't want to debate you. Pastor, no, I don't talking, have to we please right remember to mute because the echo is really loud. Right. But I, I like to say, say this, you know, it is, it is very disjointed, these conversations for me. I mean, they're all over the place half the time. And uh, I'm not complaining. This is not my channel, but it's frustrating sometimes when you're on one subject and jumps to the next and then it jumps to the next. And, and within seconds, I'm, I'm just I just wanted to let you guys know that. that's how I feel about that. But, yeah, whatever you guys want to debate. whatever. Yeah, no, I, was, I, I can't argue I with you. Stump. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Danny. No, no, that's all I had. That's all I had, brother. I, I was sort of seizing on the opportunity because me and Aiden have been private messaging on occasion about having a conversation, and uh, and we haven't really had the chance to have a real public conversation. And uh, I'm interested in, in a lot of his take on, on the, the primary sciences because he's very well studied on it. So I was I sent it past the conversation because I didn't know when he was going to be around again. Hey, guys, just real quick. There's somebody named The Vulture who would like to come into the chat and would like to have someone explain how to do it. Okay, so are you on Pastor Chuck's channel or Yeah, I am. I am. I switched over because this is where Is that where Vulture's at? Yes, Vulture's on Chuck's channel. Okay, so I'm going to post the link here on uh the private chat. You can repost that on Pastor Chuck's channel or share it with the uh, the Vulture. Okay, did you hear that uh Vulture? Well, I shared the private. Uh, <clears throat> I shared the link on the private chat. Okay. On yeah, the it, iPhone, what I do is uh, I go click the link, and then you hit copy, and then you open the Safari app and, and paste it in the browser. That's how I do it on my phone. Well, I have it. I have it pinned on my channel, but I don't think it's pinned on Pastor Chuck's channel. Yeah, Logan, if, Logan, can you post it on Pastor Chuck's channel for the Vulture? Either that or the Vulture can go to your channel, Stephen. Logan has the ability Probably. because he's a okay. uh, he's a uh, moderator over on Pastor Chuck's channel. Okay. You, you there, Logan? I just did it. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's the link. Uh, okay, the I, I, I accepted the uh, invite and all that jazz, so it all should be kosher, I would guess. Yeah. We lost the prophet, Daniel. We lost. Very sorry, Danny. Oh, there's too many, uh, too many buttons on this thing. I I'm still getting a really bad echo. Are you getting the echo now? No, no, I'm not. That's because I just muted Pastor Chuck. Pastor Chuck's got the worst echo, so whenever he's talking, he's going to unmute, but if he's not talking, he's going to keep it muted. Brother Chuck, Happy I will that. never believe that it's you that's echoing. I'm on your side. You're unmuted, Pastor. Have your say. Dad. All right, see if there's an echo now. Hello. All good. Is I can echo? hear the echo now from Danny's side. Can yeah, I can hear it too. Am I, am I echoing? No. You yeah, don't echo. We it, echo. Yeah, it's not I us. I can hear a proverb stuff. <laughs> this is weird. How many computers do you have on right now, Pastor? Two. Well, this what one a, and... What's the other one on? Uh, Facebook. I mean, not Facebook. Um, YouTube. Go mute that one. Turn the volume all the way down on that it, one. It's muted. 
Are you sure? Yeah, I always mute it. That does not yeah. make any sense. Okay, everybody, we have David. Um, David, I'm assuming you're the vulture. He's muted, isn't he? You're muted, David. There you okay, are. Okay, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay. I can't, I can't, so I'm going to dip out and dip back in again. I don't hear him. <laughs> oh, okay, Copy brother. That. All right, David, welcome to the stream. What do you have for us? The King James Bible is mathematically encoded. Nice. Hey, Amen. I've heard that before. No, no, I did. I, they finally, I don't know what's been going on tonight, but first of all, I'll make this very quick and let's get on with this. But they, um, in the, uh, Stephen, in the audio section, first of all, it had the wrong microphone. I have two microphones on the computer. So it was defaulting to the wrong microphone. Now it has the right microphone. Okay. And for this microphone that I'm on now, it has an echo cancellation uh, box. So I'm going to click that right now. And that should do it, hopefully. This is Chucky Poo. Well, I let's see. I have an echo for you. Um, I'm not hearing an echo right now, so I think we're good, Pastor. That's yeah. because that Chucky Poo check i don't know check the block that said no no you should be a rapper <laughs> no I, know, I never i never echoed before i was wondering why the wrong microphone was in my audio settings and then it gets the right microphone in my audio settings but i had to click the box that had echo cancellation and you all have confirmed that I'm not echoing. If I start echoing, uh, please. There's a button for go. echo cancellation. Why is yes. it uh, automatic? There's a box. Clicked? There's a box. Yeah. So it's I don't know settings. why they'd give you that choice. That's that's a good point, Christian. So I'm trying to hear about David's theory about the numerology. All right. Yeah. Let's go now. Yeah, Everything. So, okay. Every, I all, have a question all, all for device, David first. All devices are working. Yeah. yeah I'm glad you made it, David. David, I have a question for you before we get into your your belief here, and we're going to let you have ample time as long as you're respectful to tell us what you believe. Um, but my question for you, you said the Word of God is is coded. Is it only the King James? Because I have an NASB, and if it's not also coded, is that good or bad? Well, all that I can do is give the information that God has given me. That's all that I can do. Uh, God has given me the mathematical structure, the King James Bible in English. Uh, at one time I saw possibly a little bit in the German and Spanish, but I only speak a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of American Sign Language. So as far as for this, uh, I believe that the King James Bible is perfect from God. And if you speak English, you should use it. Uh, hey, Vulture, have you made a video about this on YouTube before? Once before I, I was on someone else's channel, you may have saw. Well, t other twice, two other times. Hey, Vulture, when you say God told you, tell me what that means. How? How did he tell you? He just showed me. Uh, there was a – my memory is, is not so good. Or I shouldn't say good, but not so – not so in the in the Bible, he showed you where this was or how this was. Uh, it was it was a over time. God showed me. Uh, so you didn't hear like voices or have a vision or something like that, or did you? No, no. I I should have said no vision or anything like that. I should have said that uh, God just showed me through various means. I should have said. So. Okay. Uh, what do you mean by David, are you studying studying the Bible? Is that what it is? What's that like studying and comparing, or, or was it some other way? Is there anything like the Da Vinci Code? Uh, well, it, interestingly, you say the Da Vinci Code because if I'm not mistaken, in the movie they actually mentioned the Fibonacci sequence, and it has a little bit of a connection to that. But but suffice to say, it's a long story, and I don't want to say the wrong details to it. But but over time, God has shown me the mathematical structure to the book, to the King James Bible. 
Is that something you can share with us now, or it'll take a long time? Uh, well, I mean, I, I could show, I could, I could show, share a little bit, and then, uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, there's so much information it would take hours, but just a little bit, you know. I'd like to, I'd like to hear a little bit because I, I agree with you. I, I believe that's true. We sure. understand you don't want to share the whole thing with us, so share part two of part B. The, uh, we'll start with we'll start with Genesis one one. That's it's that's a simple way to start. I don't know um, you, he, David, but you probably just one stump over. Amen. <laughs> I live in Louisiana. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Let's hear it. Uh, okay, so you can start with Genesis one one, first verse of the Bible. Uh, there's ten words there. Now, the square root of 10 is 3.16. Everybody here knows John 3.16, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the beginning is three words, 14 letters, like pi. In the beginning, God, four words, 17 letters. Now, if you take four and you divide it by 17, you're going to get 0.235. The word truth occurs in the King James Bible 235 times. Now, this is what this is the kind of thing that we're talking about here is that the text itself is encoded. And there's there's a lot, a lot of information. This is just there's some simple math to it. And if I'm not mistaken, there's some very complex math to it. I'm not very decent myself at math, but I've seen enough to know some people chalk this type of thing up to coincidence. Now, I don't personally believe in coincidence. Right. I don't believe any Christians. I, I, I have to interject here. It's a quick one, uh, David. Um, sure. Uh, I apologize, but the rest of these people are used to me interjecting in the middle of a sentence. Anyway, is this the uh, Bible codes, like Hitler's mentioned and uh, uh, the Holocaust is mentioned? Are we talking about these codes in the Bible? Like Nostradamus, you're talking about, Pastor Chuck? Yes. No, yeah, Nostradamus. Yeah. Well, this is more like a uh, a mathematical structure, and there's also, okay. for example, like uh, for example, the word God occurs in the King James Bible four thousand four hundred and forty four times. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting? First and last. First and last verse of the King James Bible has 44 letters. So take 4,444. The square root of that is 66.66. .66. There's 66 books in the King James Bible. The book of Isaiah actually has 66 books. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, there's what's called the Isaiah Mini Bible. You can look into it. But each chapter of Isaiah, according to this, uh, matches that book of the King James Bible in order. So Isaiah serves like a blueprint for the King James Bible. So it's not that uh, some people, if you look at textual critical theory, people believe that, hey, look, God inspired the original documents, and then after that, it's whatever happened. I don't believe that. I believe that God preserved the Bible for us and has given the Bible to us, and the mathematical structure to the Bible is proof that this Bible is 100% accurate in English. Now, as far as other languages go, that's David, not my level of expertise. I'm uh, I'm asking this not skeptically, but sure. just for Definitely. context. What are these codes telling you? What is the code? Well, what it's the fact that to? it shows that the Bible, the King James Bible itself, is from God. It's not just some random document. It's actually from God. It was encoded by God. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Like, and it, and it's, you know, there's different ways that it goes about. You can use square roots. You can add things. For example, uh, there are 39 Old Testament books, 27 New Testament books. The word bondage occurs 39 times. The word liberty occurs 27 times. 39 times 27 is 1053. All forms of the word preach occurs 153 times. Peter and Paul both occur, if I'm not mistaken, in 153 verses. So this type of thing goes on and on to where the text is not just random. It's not something that was written by people. And you'll have to double check that with the Peter and Paul verses. I'm quoting out of my memory. So, But it's not just a random document. This was actually constructed by God, and you can use math to see. Uh, for example, the word Christ. The word Christ occurs 555 times. All forms of the word die, D-I-E, all forms of the word righteous, 
and all forms of LOV occur 555 times. Now, if you take the square root of 555, you'll get 23.5, and the word truth occurs 235 times. Some people might believe this is a coincidence, but as you see more and more and more and more and more of it, you have to say the word coincidence quite a bit at that point. It gets to the point where I don't personally believe that. I can't believe that. This is what God has shown me. And even uh, the numbers themselves have coincided in my own personal life, but that's not, that's not, you know, that's just another point to show it even actually, uh, the number pi itself, it actually, there's encoding in pi for this. For example, if you search the first 200 million digits of pi, and that number is specific because if you take 200 million, you divide it by 555, you get 360, 360 point, and it may be 360 out of my memory there. All forms of the word faith occurs 360 times. And if you look through pi, you'll find certain things. I'm going to look at some notes here because I don't have all of that memorized. But uh, let's see here if I can find one for an easy example. Let me see. Give me just one second. I don't want to hold the mic from anyone. I, the notes aren't available directly in front of me. I should have had them for it. But uh, – there's a there's a program you can you might be able to, one of you may be able to find on the internet where you search the digits of pi. Can one of you pull that for me? Hey David, uh, just a quick question. So if all this numerology type of stuff is in the King James version, only in the King James version, then it should be in both the Greek and the Hebrew manus manuscripts in exactly the same way, right? I've seen uh, a YouTube video where a man talks about the Hebrew and the Greek, but I, I don't want to comment on that because I don't want to say the wrong thing. No, I understand. So. I'm just saying that if it were true, if it's true, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying if it is, then it would have to be exactly the same in the Hebrew and the Greek manuscripts, because if they are not, then how can you get there in the English version of the King James version of the, King James version of the Bible? Well, I, I don't I know think, that I'm. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, David. No, you you, you speak. I've already spoke. Some you go okay, ahead. Okay. Yeah. I I don't think he's. I think he's trying to say that uh, the King James Bible is the perfect the perfect Bible, which is uh, you know, what God is using to communicate to His people in these days. I I, I believe that, uh, and I think this this numbers uh proves that everything jives together. Just like uh, I spoke before, how uh, Paul pointed back to uh to the beginning of creation and, and the old Testament jives with the new Testament. And, and here's another way of proving through numbers, uh, that everything in the Bible jives, you know, uh, in the King James version. So, uh, I think that's just point because if, when you look at Greek and, uh, Hebrew, you can have many words come out in English from, from one word that's either a Greek word or a Hebrew word. You know, it could be a phrase that they, they uh, interpret. So I don't think that would jive in that manner. I could see how it wouldn't, but, I think his point is that King James is, is what we're looking at with the numbers, with the numbers. Oh, I I understand. I'm a King James guy myself. I'm not King James only, but I'm yeah, a King, yeah, James, I, yeah. no, I, I King James guy myself. I'm just saying, if it's in the King James version, in order for it to be a logical and uh, legitimate uh, copy, right, yeah. of the old, the old, what you're copying from Hebrew or Greek text. Has yeah. to stay. Have to have those same numbers in there. Well, I mean, no, how could how could they not? No, because because like I said, it could be one word in Greek that they translate in English to two or three words, right? Like a little phrase. So and he's 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 counting numbers, like you know the the, uh, the word salvation appears three hundred sixteen times, whatever you know. I, I don't know exactly that. So it only works in English. Well, the King James Bible is he's pointing to the King James. But I, I'm, I don't want to speak for him, but the way I understood it, I've seen videos about this before and I agreed with them uh, that this is a, a way of showing that the King James Bible is uh, what God wants you to see and read uh, I, for instance for instance right this is what brought me to, to the understanding about numbers in the Bible I believe that sin is the mark of the beast right we spoke about this before now when you look at when, when, when did it happen and what's the number of the beast 666 and when did it first happen in the garden at verse 3 6 Right, three six 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 six. When they were at the tree eating of that fruit, 
So that's how I always understood that there's numbers that connect in the Bible. And that was just a simple one that points to the fact that sin, in fact, is the mark of the beast, in my opinion, one of the proofs. So well, I, I'm not that's saying not that it's not point. there. Pardon me? I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's not there. And there's mm -hmm. some numbers, things that are uh, pretty unusual. Uh, I'm just saying, I, if you look at it, sometimes they really read into that. You know what I mean? Like, like just an example, he said uh, 1,066, I think was the number, but he related it to uh, 100, 166. That's yeah, not the that. same. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I guess they're saying, I guess, uh, yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. How you could extrapolate it a little more than, uh, you know. Yeah, we can add our own little twist to it, you know, yeah, each individual yeah. again. I get it, but I think I think that there's something to it. You know, I think there's something to it, and it's the way uh, that God uses it to show us. I mean, because that would prove, for one thing, that uh, God inspired Scripture originally, and he also inspired the translators, right? Because <laughs> he, 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 otherwise the translators could have did anything. They could have put their own words in there, change things, whatever. But right, also, right. Uh, and also the numbering of the, of the Bible. I, I would assume that the Bible has the same numbers in different languages. Well, you got to the same chapter. The numbers... Numbers. They didn't have numbers in their Bible back then. Well, I'm saying, but when it, they when didn't it, have it, chapters and verses and right, whatever, it was just one. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So when they were at it, it had to be inspired as well. If this is true, the numbers of the uh, come through and prove things in the Bible or how it jives. So he had to be inspired as well by the numbering, even. You know what I mean? That's. Yeah, that's no, I hear you. I I yeah, think there's I, something I to the number thing. I'm just not sure that it's as often or as you know as frequent as. So people read into it, you know, I'm kind of when it comes to that yeah, kind of I stuff, that. I do believe that there's some issues with numbers in there that God has put in there for our, mm -hmm. our benefit. Um, yeah. But when it comes to some of the stuff, they really go off the wall on. And when it comes to that kind of stuff, I'm more of a Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens kind of guy. There's lies, damn lies and statistics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just, I agree with the, I, I see where you're coming from because it could be uh, stretched a little bit, but, I, yeah. I basically agree that there is there is numbers that verify that this is uh, God's word that helps to verify it. Now, is sure. it has anything to do with you believing the word or not? No, but it's just a way of going. Wow, that's cool. God's proven that this is His word. You know. Yeah, it's a faith builder. Yeah, Amen. I think it's pretty interesting. Okay, so let me ask you this, David. Is that? And I ask you this, uh, not in a mocking way is that your like pet doctrine your favorite doctrine that you talk about well this was this was given to me by god um i was actually a non-believer for a very long time and even towards the end I, I was a stone cold atheist i did not believe in god i was not one of the atheists that says well i don't know if god exists no i was definitely in the camp that god did not exist and the material world was all that there was you live you die and that's the end of it uh, but during, uh, during the events that happened here recently in 2020, God revealed himself to me. And then I went looking for evidence and God provided, uh, whenever one of you, uh, the other guy that was speaking, uh, he had mentioned what it was, was that, uh, the number that I gave, if I'm thinking of the right, the 20, uh, the 39 times 27, 39 old Testament books times 27 new Testament. 39 times 27 is 1053 and all forms of the word preach occurs 153 times. Sometimes you'll see a zero that is or isn't there, uh, but you, you can still see the connections. For example, the word believe occurs 143 times. The word he occurs 10,430 times. So you have two zeros there, but it's 143 and 143. Now, what are the odds of believe and he in the King James Bible, with the exception of two zeros equaling the same number? Same thing with, uh, for example, well, not the same thing, but I'll give you another example. The word believe occurs 143 times. The word temple in the New Testament occurs 117 times. 143 plus 117 equals 260. The word father capitalized occurs 260 times. So you've got believe plus temple equals father. If you look, if I'm not mistaken, the word temple itself, the 143rd mention of temple is in John 221, where he talks about the temple of his body. 
That's verse number 26,117. So you see these connections over and over in the sense that some people may believe this is random and, and God gives faith. You know, I can't convince anyone of anything. I can just give you what God has shown me and then it's between you and God. But I can't personally believe that, that all of this is a coincidence. If you were to walk into a store and there were 10 other people there in the store with you and the cashier guessed everyone's telephone number in a row exactly, I don't believe that's possible. Now, people can come up with any kind of theory they want to explain it away, what, whatever. I don't believe that's possible. And I do not believe that this is possible either. Uh, you know, I've given a little bit of the information. My wife once gave me the example, when you tell people these things, if you were to try to describe the beach to somebody with a handful of sand, they may not have the same reaction. But if you see the beach itself, when I see all of this number structure, it is not possible that this is not from God. Yes, this is a... Fasc you're being very fascinating, uh, David, the things you're saying. Very, very intriguing. Can I ask you something else, David? Absolutely. You can ask me anything. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. How long Amen. have you been Absolutely. saved? Well, the, uh, in 2020, I can't give any exact date, but in 2020, I know that I was an atheist and then I wasn't. I was saved from atheism. God has okay. saved me. Jesus wow, Christ that's... Me on the cross. Would you mind sharing a little bit of your testimony with us? I mean, that's that's really, in a nutshell, that's the story. You know, I... I... How, like, did you hear a preacher say something? Did you go to a church service? What, what was it that just turned that light bulb on over your head? What was it that just opened your eyes? Well, if I remember correctly, because like I said, my memory... And I also have obsessive compulsive disorder, so bear with me. Um... But in 2020, I was riding in the car with my wife, and we were going to pick up some medicine. And the symptoms of 2020, the symptom, I'm not saying things on purpose, the symptoms hit me. And in that moment, if I remember correctly, I passed a banner in a yard, and it said, this too shall pass. But just in that moment, it wasn't rational. It wasn't some preacher or anything like that. It was just, I just knew. I just knew. I knew that. I uh, felt that it was judgment on how I'd been living. Uh -huh. And uh, I turned to God and I went looking for evidence and God provided. Well, praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. That's 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 incredible. You know, so I don't. I try my best, even though I fail spectacularly, to be as biblical as possible in the sense of, you know, I, I don't use labels. For anything, as far as if someone asks me, well, what are you? I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. I use the King James Bible nope. because that's what God has given to me. But if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe that he died for your sins and rose from the grave, the Bible says, whosoever believeth, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are saved. Amen. Now, this other information that God has given me, with obsessive compulsive disorder, you can doubt everything. Right. Yeah. Math I, is, I, know what talk, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Math is certain. I mean, one plus one is two. We know that. And I can share this information and it's a fact, unless I've made a mistake somewhere in the math, it's a mathematical fact. Like it's a mathematical fact that all forms of the word number in the King James Bible occurs 314 times. The word believe occurs 143. The word trust occurs 134. That's three, one, four in a different order. Wow. Okay. And if you add four, one, three in there, like Philippians 413, if you add, and you meant to double check the math, and I hope I'm not saying the wrong thing, but if you, if somebody has a calculator, if you can add three, one, four, plus one, four, three, plus one, three, four, plus four, one, three, you should get 1,004. David, I'm about to blow your mind. There are 12 apostles, and there are 12 tribes of Israel, and there are 12 months of the year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there it is. Stephen, that's 
There's, uh, um, there's a lot. There's a lot in reality that uh, there's a picture on the wall in our house of a, a tree. A tree uh, behind it has the sunlight. And one day I was looking at it. And and my, neighbor's, my neighbor's address is 1212. <laughs> the, uh, I saw that picture. Hey David, if I could ask you a question. So, uh, sure, sure. Before before 2020, w was there any time that you were a Christian or thought of becoming a Christian before that time? When I was a teenager. Okay, so you, teenager. you had an idea already. Sure, I went to church as a as a child. Okay, okay. Or younger. All right. Yeah, so I knew. I mean, I I knew, but I I got away from it. And I mean, if you. Without, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I mean, if you don't want to believe in God, you're not going to. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to want mm -hmm. to believe. Well, you know, I gave my uh, testimony on here uh, last week, I guess it was. And, um, you know, supposedly I was saved as a seven year old kid when my mom led me to Christ. Um, but I went through this long journey <laughs> of either I wasn't really saved or I was very carnal for many years trying to live a double life, one foot in each world. And it wasn't until 2019 when something very hurtful happened to me that I finally, you know, realized that I needed to get right with God. And if I was a Christian at the time, I was a carnal one and I needed to stop being carnal. I needed to totally commit myself to God. And it took, you know, that was over four years ago and it's taken it's been a process of God sanctifying me, but you know, now I, I don't even like to remember the things I used to do in my old life, you know, and um, I'm much, my life is much better now than it ever was back when I was, had sin in my life. Amen, Ryan. Hey, Danny, are you still there? Yes, sir. I'm here. You are a King James only guy, aren't you? Not not only. I'm a King James guy, um, and I prefer that. Uh -huh. um, but I'm, I'm not a King James only. I know there's other versions out there that will get the gospel message across. Amen. Okay. Well, you being a King James guy, what are your, what is your take on what David's sharing? Uh, I, I, I guess I can't really make a judgment one way or the other because i do kind of believe what he's saying there's a part of me that believes that there is a numerical structure to the bible i just think that people reach too far to try to make things happen that aren't really there do you, does that make sense sure yeah i mean there's some there's some mess there's some something to the numbers i mean i just don't think there's as many of them out there as people kind of claim well, have you guys ever heard of Leguinzic DNA? No. Mitochondrial DNA, that's the only one I'm familiar with. Well, Le Leguinzic DNA, what I'm referring to, is somebody's speech pattern. The, the speech pattern that is very unique and specific to an individual, that you can tell it apart when reading it on paper from someone else. Um, the scriptures has that. And it's the same consistent Leguinzic DNA speech pattern from Genesis all the way through Revelation. And that proves that the scriptures was Holy Spirit inspired, written by man, inspired by the Holy Spirit. I agreed. And if you add that, add to that, I agree with whatever, with everything you said. When you add to it that it's had, um, it was written over 1400 years by over 40 different authors on three different continents. That, that, uh, that's, that just, right? that just makes it all the more yeah impressive. It surely does. Danny with no internet to communicate. Could you imagine? No, there's no way. It's not possible. That's a big I, I, God. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I would say also, too, that uh, God has shown me here recently that, you know, when you really uh, I, I 
for a, a little while, I kind of dabbled in philosophy and uh, the Bible, the Bible talks about philosophy. I was listening to a guy talk and he had said something along the lines of, of the Bible, uh, like arguments for God or whatnot. And, and the idea really hit me that with the first verse of the, of the Bible, the King James Bible, I should say, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God. There really is no other starting point. If you're going to try to explain reality, because people can people can discuss evolution, they can discuss whether they think the flood happened or not. I'm concerned with why there's a reality instead of nothing at all. Yeah. And because of God. In the beginning, God is the only answer because only God has the ability to create everything you see around you. Now, some people would say, well, when, where did God come from? Only God can explain everything and only God can explain himself. Yeah. Amen. You know, something had to always exist. Either God always existed or the universe always existed in scientific evidence. It definitely uh, explains that it shows that the universe had a beginning. Um, but God himself is the universe had to be created by someone outside of it. Someone who exists outside of the universe. Just like if you're building a house, you know, you're, you're outside of the house building it, you know, or that's, right. I mean, the, the universe, I mean, these people who believe that the universe simply made itself, I just, and, and they think we're the crazy ones. I don't understand that at all. I have a, if you were done, because I don't want to interrupt and I don't want to talk in over anybody. That's a real pet peeve of mine. And sometimes yeah, I, do, I'm fine. So it's fine. I don't want to talk over anybody or, or hog the mic or anything like that. Um, I want to be as Christ-like as possible. But if you really think about the idea of emergent complexity, which is evolution seems to be predicated on the idea that things slowly change. You know, I look different than my parents. They look different than their parents. You go back a couple million years and they look like different animals. And that's that's a rough estimation. I know that's not entirely well, it may be, but the idea of emergent complexity, each layer of reality is more complex than the than the level below it. So if you go upwards in emergent complexity, do you come down in decreasing simplicity until you get to the base level of reality? What is the most simple thing and why does it exist? It couldn't have come out of nothing. We know that. So did it always simply exist? Because at that point, you have to believe that something always existed. And then you have to believe that it somehow, for no reason, organizes itself into everything you see. It's not going to work. You have to start from the top at the most complex. And that creates everything else. That's God. You have to have God. In the beginning, God. If you don't have God in the beginning, you have no working theory. Unless you want to assume that everything came from nothing, and I don't know that anyone can rationally believe that. I mean, you can be forced to believe that if you don't want the alternative. If you don't want to believe in God, then you have to assume, well, there's an explanation. I just don't know it yet, but I can't accept God because. Well said. Well said, brother. Hey, Dustin, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. I've just been dude, listening. Dude, you've been quiet forever. Would you like a platform to announce your run for presidency or counter everything David has said or agree with everything our new guest David has said? I can't find any fault or flaw. Okay. Thank you for that lengthy commentary. And none of this is from me. Eh, no, I just don't have anything to add is all. You know, if you start from God, that's where everything comes from. All wisdom, all understanding, all of it is from God. You know, a lot of people will believe that somehow man had to preserve the scriptures and we had to translate them right. And, and if you don't, study for years in critical textual theory. You're not going to understand the Bible. I believe God provided the Bible to me in English. Now, when it comes to other people, you know, there are people right now out there carrying the NIV Bible around. And if they believe in Jesus, they're saved. You might have somebody with a little magazine article on a desert island somewhere who reads about Jesus and God uses that to save them. 
I'm not saying you're not a believer if you don't have the right Bible, but I do believe that there is a right Bible in English, and if you speak English, you should use it. But God provides. You know, the earliest Christians might not have had a Bible at all. They might have just, you know, heard someone preaching, and if they believe, they're saved. This is about Jesus. I'm just giving the information that I've been given. Does that make sense? Well, that's legit, because Romans chapter 1 says the same thing. You're going to know that there's a father, and you're going to know there's a creator by looking at the creation. So nobody's, yeah, no, nobody has excuse. If I may ask, um, do you, I don't know where in the country you live, but are you relatively close to Dinosaur Adventure Land at all? I live um, in Louisiana. Oh, yeah, you're not far then. You're really not too far. Um, that's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm about four hours away. I, I think it would be good if you visited there and, and met... Uh, Kent Oven personally and told him your story. You know, I think it's very inspiring. I really do. Interestingly enough, I've actually already spoken to him. Oh, okay. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Yeah. He's, uh, he's really, you know, I, I, I can't say enough good about him. I mean, I just really have respect and admiration for him. You know, I, I, even with, uh, there was that, that, man that was talking earlier Aiden you know it's it's easy even myself it's it's easy to hear someone who doesn't believe talk and you might start to get frustrated or or whatever it is and right. you know for whatever reason I don't say whatever reason but biblically speaking he has his reasons for not believing and if if we're not careful if we're not careful you know we can watch debates online and you you hear people say things like, man, he destroyed him. He annihilated that guy. And, and man, he's beaten this guy. I don't believe that that's the most Christ. That's Christ like really at all to be doing. We should right. be. Sure. Uh, it's really not. And uh, try to be careful not to do that. And <coughs> I've learned that um, a lot of atheists, I don't know what the percentage is. A lot of them do not have a good relationship with good relationships with their fathers um lee strobel is a very good example he had a very bad relationship with his father and i think that contributed to his atheism and you know fortunately god delivered him you know god saved him but uh he's an example of an atheist that did not not have a good relationship with his father i mean god loves aiden he loves aiden like he loves me and like he loves you you know i mean i was an atheist uh, I, I, I hated god i hated it uh, right. And that's the way that it, it, it's, I wouldn't even call them atheists. I'd call them anti-theists. Well, I was just about to say the same thing. David, if you hated God, could you really have ever been an atheist? Because an atheist doesn't believe there is a God. Yeah, you can, uh, you can slowly either convince or be convinced that God doesn't exist. I mean, you can really want God to not exist. And you can slip further and further into the point where you actually start to, you literally believe that God doesn't exist. And that's, that's a, that's a bad place to be because you don't. Yeah, you start to believe the delusions and the lies. You actually start to believe them. Sure. I mean, there's, there's, you know, God didn't give up on me, but, but I mean, you can, you know, you, you go and you look, you have your, or at least I had my favorite argument against God. (laughs) And that's what I was convinced of, and that's what I held on to. You know, but God, God shows up, and God wins. Yeah, you were you were drawn to him. You didn't figure it out through any type of argument or listening to debates. He he showed you personally, right? I just I just knew in a moment. I knew. Yeah, that's why uh, it's, uh, Scripture says, you know, unless God draws you. There's nothing we can do but proclaim his word to you. We can't we can't argue into believing in God, anybody. So I can't, I can't we, we've had this. other uh, atheists that are on here that had signs, but they, they they decided to reject them rather than uh kind of pay attention and go along with it. So you have to be drawn by God. Yeah, I don't have a problem listening to any what any atheist has to say. I've probably heard everything already. Um that's not really the concern. But just like when Aiden is on a, a, a educational tour, instead of being snarky and condescending, you can learn a lot from the guy. He's brilliant. But it's that 
that condescending, I'm smarter than you type of thing. It, I just, I don't care for it. There's no reason for it. We can hash out ideas without taking jabs at each other. I know God has given Aiden some gifts. And if, you know, God can use Aiden, I mean, God can use, I mean, if God can use me. Amen. David, are you upset that I started singing the Canadian National Anthem? Because it is possible I didn't act totally Christ-like. I, I don't remember you singing the National Anthem. But, I mean, it. I mean anything that anybody has, I mean, I don't even want to discuss anyone's, you know, flaws. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm sinful, too. So, anything anybody said, if anybody Steven, said anything, you, give them. let's move on. You are a sidecar instigator, my friend. Hey guys, I gotta go. Um, I'll catch up with you later if you're still on. All right, Dustin. God bless. All right, bud. See you, bud. Bye, Bye Dustin. Dustin. Much love, love you guys. Love you. Love you too. Would you like to know something interesting about the flood? Sure. Sure. If you check the dates, and you'll have to check it because I'm just quoting out of my memory, so I don't want to say the wrong thing, but if you check the dates of the flood, it may be the 17th and the 27th beginning and ending date of the flood. You'll notice the first verse of the King James Bible, the vowels and consonants, 17 and 27. In the first verse, the very first verse, Genesis 1-1? One, one. Genesis 1-1. One, one. Count the vowels and count the consonants. Interesting. And then check the dates of the flood. You'll notice that... Uh, I'm not mistaken. I don't have a calculator. I can give me a second. I do have a calculator, actually. Uh, let's see. I remember here. Right? Yeah, the square root. Uh, yeah, the square root of uh, 314 is actually uh, 17.72. I know that's not exactly it's 72. It's 27, you know, in a different order, but you still get the same numbers. And so for this to constantly be occurring, there is a structure here. And God can do this. You know, it's, it's not, it is shocking. You know, it can be shocking, I should say, to see it the first time. But when you really think about it, it's not. I mean, if God can create everything, he can certainly encode the Bible so that you know that it's. Real. Yeah. Hey, David, I like how you think outside the box. We can't put, uh, I think it was, well, actually, I think it was Dustin last night. Uh, mentioned that, you know, we can't put God in a box. And if you look back to um, science before the the Great Enlightenment, um, uh, these scientists, they, they started their uh, investigations into the universe and based on their knowledge of God. And of course we've gotten they don't do that anymore but uh i just wanted to say to you david i i endorse you and i i hope you continue on uh thinking outside the box like you did i i, I read a book um i don't know how long ago it's been now but about these bible codes mm -hmm. and it it intrigued me i mean it uh uh, something like that. And please, uh, I'm going to say this word on purpose. I really am, but please don't take it the wrong way because I am saying it on purpose. Uh, it's weird things <laughs> like the Bible codes that um, might really uh, come about to enlighten us more one day. And uh, I admire you. And, and I mean that truly. And um, with all that said, guys, it's been a long day. I'm going to check out early here tonight. And, uh, all right. Do you want me to stop it streaming from your channel? Yeah, if you could. Yeah. And um, I guess um, Stephen has a schedule I'm going to... Uh, When we'll be doing our live streams, right, Steve? Yeah, we're going to do live streams on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Are you still having a uh, debate Saturday and Sunday? Uh, those will still be honored, yes. 
right. Okay. Who was All right, guys. I love you. All right. Love you too. Love you too, brother. Have a good night. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 day started at four thirty this morning, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, pr I'm pretty beat, so I don't want to sit out here and nod off or anything. <laughs> I'm about right. But uh, one more time, David, please, please uh, continue your um, your investigation into these codes, and uh, please keep us up to date. And uh, I, for one, if you uh, if you recommend any uh, reading material. Uh, please message it to me. I think you can. We may not be friends, but can't you message something one time? If I reply, then we can message back and forth. Is that how that works? I'm not sure that I know what you what you're talking about. Uh, I'm saying if you wanted to message me, uh, I recommend a book or uh, anything to do with this topic. If you message me. And I will get the message. If I message you back, like I say, thank you, then uh, the the stream is open for us to message back and forth. And, of course, we can be friends, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, if you can send me a message, sure. I'll send you any. I'll send you the information that God has given me with it. I'll give you as much information. Okay, what's as your you um, wait a minute. Let me get a piece of paper in front of me here. <clears throat> What's your a uh, um? What what do I message it to? Uh, I'll put Fa the um, Facebook message, or if you prefer email, whatever you prefer. Yeah, I'll put my uh, I'll put my email in the chat. Okay. So, and or you do know you have my... an email on your? I'm sorry. Do you have an email somewhere on your YouTube channel? Yeah, it's and I don't mind giving it out because it's public on my channel. It's uh Father Charles, of course, lowercase everything. Uh, fa when I say Father, it's F R Charles W at uh, gmail dot com. I will send you an email. Okay, sounds great. All right, Steve, I'll be talking to you, and God bless all of you. Yep, sorry, yep. I, sorry, I pooped out on you guys tonight early tonight. So, all right, brother, it's all right. I'm gonna have to do it right. soon too. Good night. Uh, Good night. You headed out. Ryan's oh. cutting out too. Who's cutting out? I guess if Ryan's leaving, also we could just shut the stream down. Okay. Yeah, it's getting close to ten. I do have to go back to work in the morning. I'm afraid. All right, well, fellas, I'm gonna close the stream. All right. And all right.